going to talk about systems of equations. And we're not going to go into all the gory details about systems of equations. We're just going to talk about the things that we need to be able to use to practically work with systems of equations. We're going to look at a particular type of system of equations that's common in business and real world scenarios. And in this type of system, we're measuring two or more different relationships that all involve either the same time scale or the same number of items. Solving a system like this helps us to either make predictions about when the variables will be equal or to think about how one relationship might surpass another one. For example, two competing products. There are actually two ways to solve a system of equations algebraically. One is called substitution and one is called elimination. In this course, we're going to stick to substitution. The first type of example I want to look at is a business example where we look at the cost, revenue, and profit relative to either the number of items, the user licenses, or the hours of services that are sold. We're going to look at a company called DocuFlix, which is a documentary movie company and it runs a streaming subscription service. Some users sign up for accounts at $12.99 a month and if you pay by the year, the cost actually drops to $9.99 a month. About 40% of users pay by the year and 60% of the users pay by the month. And if you work that out, it gives you an average revenue per user of $11.79 per user per month. And that's the important number to pull out of all of that is that we now know what the average revenue per user is. The server team finds that the server costs divided amongst all the users are about $4.89 per user per month. In addition, the company has expenses of $29,748 per month, and those are what we call our fixed costs. $4.89 is our per user variable cost, and $29,748 is our fixed monthly cost. I've defined some variables for you. So we're going to have X be the average number of users per month. Capital C is the average costs for the company per month given X users and capital R is the average revenue per month given X users. We're gonna start by just writing formulas for C of X and R of X. Let's start with R of X because that's actually the easier formula to write. We know that our average revenue per user per month is $11.79, which means that for every user, we're making $11.79 a month. We're simply gonna multiply that by X, the average number of users in a month, and that should tell us about what our revenue is. So for example, if we had 1,000 users, that would be $11,790. C of X is the cost equation, and we have two types of costs. We have a variable cost, that's a per user per month cost, that's $4.89. So every time we add a user, it costs us $4.89 for that one user. And then on top of that, we have a fixed cost of $29,748. Now that we have these two equations, we can look at how many users DocuFlix needs to have on average every month to break even. In other words, we want to find out when does revenue equal cost? Well, if we want to find out when R of X equals C of X, we can just set them equal to each other. We know that R of X is 11.79 X. And we know that C of X is 4.89 X plus 29,748. This gives us the equation 11.79x equals 4.89x plus 29,748. Well, now we need to solve for x. That's the only variable in our problem. We have x on the left side and the right side, so we need to combine these first. I'm going to start by subtracting 4.89x from both sides. So that'll be 11.79x minus 4.89x equals 4.89x plus 29,748 minus 4.89x. On the left, we can combine our like terms. That's 11.79x minus 4.89x, which is 6.9x. On the right side, the 4.98x's drop out, leaving us with just 29,748. So now I have the equation 6.9x equals 29,748. We need to get rid of that 6.9 in front of the x. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6.9. That's 6.9x divided by 6.9 and 29,748 divided by 6.9. That leaves us with x on the left. And we need to do a little bit of division for the right. 
Dividing 29,748 by 6.9, we get 4,311.3. To break even, DocuFlix needs 4,312 users per month. Let's double check that with technology. I've written the two equations in Desmos, and now I need to zoom out to see what these equations really look like. In particular, I know that my costs start at 29,748, which is a big y-axis. Let's open the wrench menu and make an adjustment to the y-axis. Let's maybe go up to 100,000. Now on the x-axis, we're expecting to see the two graphs cross when we get to something like 4,300 on the x-axis. So let's go up to 5,000. Now when I close the wrench menu, I can see that I have two graphs. One of the graphs goes through the origin and has an increasing slope. The other graph goes through the y value that looks roughly like 30,000, but we know in fact it's 29,748. And it's also an increasing graph, though it has a lesser slope of 4.89. We can see that these two graphs cross. And if I tap the place where the two graphs cross, I can get the intersection point of the two graphs, which you'll notice is at 4311.3. That is, in fact, what we found when we solved the system of equations. The second type of example I want to look at in this video is a real-world scenario where multiple relationships both relate to the same time scale. We're going to look at the case of Netflix and cable subscriptions in the U.S., which are measured in millions of subscribers and reported quarterly to investors. Let's imagine we're the manager at Netflix in 2014 and we're looking at data for the past three years and trying to make a prediction about when we might surpass cable subscribers. We have a data table with three rows. The first row is the year. We have quarter one 2012, quarter one 2013, and quarter one 2014. I'm going to actually jump down to where we re-index the variables here. We're going to let t be the number of years since the end of quarter one 2012. So quarter one 2012 is going to be time zero. I'm just going to add that as a row above this row. Quarter one 2013 is going to be time one, and quarter one 2014 is going to be time two. So that's taken care of. The next row of the table is the number of Netflix subscribers in the U.S. in millions, which is 23.41, 29.17, and 35.67, so it's rising. The number of cable subscribers in the U.S. in millions is 52.60, 51.04 and 50.42. So the number of cable subscribers in the US is actually falling. We're going to let capital N be the number of Netflix subscribers in the US in millions. So I'm going to write that next to my chart just to remind myself that's capital N. We're going to let capital C be the number of cable subscribers in the US in millions. So I'm going to write capital C next to that row of the table. Our next task is to find the linear regression equation for the number of Netflix subscribers n of t, and the number of cable subscribers, c of t. Why don't you go ahead and take this data, go over to Desmos, and find those two linear regressions. Pause this video and come back when you're done. All right, I've got my data plotted in Desmos, and now I'm going to go ahead and find those two regression lines. I'll demonstrate it for you in case you've forgotten how to do that. Remember that it's like we start with y equals mx plus b, only those aren't our variables anymore. Instead of y, we'll use capital N1, and instead of x, we'll use lowercase t1. That's still not going to do it, because what we need to do is estimate instead of using an equal sign. So we'll backspace over the equal sign and use the tilde to calculate the regression. That gives us the regression line for n of t. We find that the slope is 6.13 and the y-intercept is 23.29 if we round. We'll do the same thing for C. We want to find C1, that's capital C sub 1, is approximated by tilde m times lowercase t sub 1 plus b. And that'll give us the regression equation for the number of cable users, which has a slope of negative 1.09 and a y-intercept of 52.44. Let's go write that down. Our linear regression equations are capital N of t equals 6.13t plus 23.29, that's the growing Netflix equation, and capital C of t equals negative 1.09t plus 52.44.
That's the slightly declining cable equation. Now that we have these two linear regression models and their graphs, let's go ahead and predict when the number of Netflix subscribers in the US will be equal to and then surpass the number of cable subscribers. We can do that by jumping over to this Desmos graph. If we tap on the point where the two lines are equal to each other, in other words, the intersection point, we can see that the intersection is 4.038, 48.042. In other words, when time is just over t equals 4, the two equations will be equal. t equals 4 is four years since the end of quarter 1, 2012. So that would be the end of quarter 1, 2016. So just after the end of quarter 1, 2016, the number of Netflix and cable subscribers in the U.S. will be equal. Now let's prove we can do that same work mathematically without the help of the graph. We want to find when n of t equals c of t. We have an equation for n of t and we have an equation for c of t. So let's just set the right halves of those equations equal to each other. 6.13t plus 23.29 equals negative 1.09t plus 52.44. We have t terms on both sides of the equation, so let's combine them. Let's add 1.09t to both sides. I'm going to use a little bit of shorthand here to just write plus 1.09t under the left side of the equation and to add 1.09t under the right side of the equation. So on the left, I have 6.13t plus 1.09t plus 23.29. If I add the two t terms, I'll have 7.22t plus 23.29. On the right-hand side, negative 1.09t plus 1.09t will drop out to be 0, and we're left with just 52 0.44. Summarizing, we have 7.22t plus 23.29 equals 52.44. We want to isolate that 7.22t, so let's now subtract 23.29 on both sides. I'm going to subtract 23.29 from the left side of the equation and subtract 23.29 from the right side of the equation. On the left side of the equation, I have 7.22t plus 23.29 minus 23.29, which leaves me with just 7.22t. On the right side of the equation, I have 52.44 minus 23.29, which gives us 29.15. So now I have 7.22t equals 29.15. To finish this, I need to divide by 7.22 on the left side and divide by 7.22 on the right side. On the left side, I have 7.22t divided by 7.22, which is just t. And on the right side, I have 29.15 divided by 7.22, which is approximately 4.04. .04. And again, that's about four years after quarter one, 2012. So we get the same answer. Awesome.